when you don't stand up to protect your spouse from the evil of your own mother, your marriage is not going to work. You might say, my mother has rights. How can you say that she's evil? She's not evil. Shaitan is evil. Shaitan comes and makes her say things and I can explain to you why. You were not married. Your mother, your sister, perhaps someone else in your family had you all to themselves. So you spent money on them. You spent time with them and you took them on holiday. You went around with them. Now you need to start your life. You need someone who's going to be called a mother to other children who will belong to you. They also have rights. So when you get married, it is natural, natural, human nature. Shaitan comes and actually fuel that and make it worse, makes it worse. What happens? Now you cannot spend as much money on your sister or your mother as you did before because now you need to save. So before I had a paycheck and I used to just give it to my folks. Now I have a paycheck, my wife has to share, I have a living, I have a house, I have a car. So naturally, sometimes people will feel, hey, I've lost out. Up to that point, it's still natural. Beyond that, Shaitan comes in Tampa and says, listen, I hate my sister-in-law, meaning your wife. So your sister is saying, I hate my sister-in-law, not because she's a bad person, not because of anything. She's taken my brother away from me. I, I hate my daughter-in-law because she's taken my son away from me. My beloved mother, my beloved sister. Trust me, my wife has not taken you or me away from each other at all. I have responsibilities. You had the privilege and the honor of having a little bit more of me when I was single. Now I'm no longer single. I have a priority. People say, obey your parents. I say, not when you are married and they are wrong. Remember this. Don't think it's noble to obey your parents when they are glaring you in the face with something haram, something wrong. They are usurping the rights of your wife. They, are, they cannot be obeyed. There is now someone who is a mother to your children who you need to consider. Yes, we will side with what is right and who is right, whether it's your mother or your wife. Remember this. So I'm not saying that your parents should be disregarded. No, respect them at all times. You know, if you go back to the, to the Quran and to the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu he never says that you blindly adopt and accept everything your parents say. Not once did he say that, not even once. In fact, the Quran says, in another place, Ihsana. Allah has asked you to be good and kind to your parents. He did not say obedient. Remember why? Because obedience belongs to Allah. That's what it is. If your parents are right, I will adopt what they are saying because they are right. If they are wrong, I will kindly tell them, respectfully tell them that you are wrong. Allahu Akbar. So I owe them kindness. When you look at the hadith of your mother, who next your mother, who next your mother, songs have been made about it. You know that, right? That never speaks of obedience. Do you know this? We need to clarify this because many, many mothers are suffering from the wrath or the pain that is inflicted upon them by their mothers in law and vice versa. Vice versa, I'm going to get to that just now. What does this mean? I'm his mother. He should listen to me first. No, I am now a man. When I was not married, yes, indeed. When I'm married, I just need to remember my mother's also a human being. She can make mistakes. I love her. I will kiss her. I will honor her. It does not mean I need to give all my cash to her. She will not decide what to cook every day as though my wife is just a worker who's come here to work. This is happening in a lot of homes where the woman comes in. Yes, we are living together. My beloved mother-in-law, we love you. And I'm talking here about my own mother too. Beautiful woman, Alhamdulillah. And I'm saying it in a beautiful way. We all love to live together. But you don't make the decisions in this home. No, not at all. If you're not a man, my beloved brother, who is now a husband, if you're not man enough to side with your spouse when your mother is wrong or when she's overstepping her rights, Trust me, there will be frustration caused by you in the marriage and the marriage will break because today's girls are not like a long time ago. When a car is damaged, they can send it for panel beating. No longer. Now when the car is damaged, I want a new one. I want out. That's what it is. Something extremely important. Why do marriages break? When we, number one, when you're not prepared to sacrifice for your spouse. Number one, when you're not prepared to stand up for your spouse. Number one, 
when you do not protect your spouse. Notice I said three things, all of them are number one. You notice? The reason is I can't tell you number two and three. These are all important matters. Today, for the smallest reason, they want out. You had the first problem, I want out. That's another point that breaks marriages, where we have a sickness. Instead of helping each other when we are gone wrong, the husband doesn't want to hear, look, this is how my home is, take it or leave it while I'm leaving it. Then the marriage breaks and what happens? We end in divorce for nothing. It could have been the best marriage. We can still work it. We can, but we are being stubborn. You, my beloved brother, stubborn. You, my dear sister, you are stubborn. And you know what? You're allowing people to have a say who are not supposed to be having a say. The worst is when you go to an alim or a counselor and he tells you, just make supper. That's it. My brother, my beloved Maulana, Sheikh, whatever you call yourself, stop saying to the people, make supper. When you see that someone is oppressing another, it is an ibadah to stop oppression, my brothers and sisters. I will tell you, look, you know, your mother is wrong. Your father has caused the damage here. I will tell you that. You can hate me for it. But it's a fact. If that is the case. The same applies. Sometimes a daughter-in-law will come into the home and already she's been trained by her friends who might have gone through other experiences. That's your enemy. So from day one, she'll say, hey, mother-in-law. Mother-in-law says, Salaamu Alaikum. Welcome to the home. And she says, hey, hey, hey relax. Take it easy. Take it easy. May Allah forgive us. Stop coming in with these preconceived ideas. Give them a chance. They love you too. They love their children. Remember, if a divorce happens, that man who was your husband will remain the son of that particular woman forever, even though you are now out of the picture. But my beloved mother, the boy is not married to you. He's your child. He will remain your child. Remember that. Because 80% or maybe more of the problems that people actually relate to us are connected to their living. And a lot of it is to do with marriage. So sometimes you get married, mashallah, you know, it's a sacrifice. It's a very big sacrifice. You will need to adjust. You must learn to serve each other. You know, one might say, okay, do I really need to cook? Well, if I say no to you and no to him, I think you guys can stay on those pills, inshallah. You can just buy a bottle and every for lunch, pop in a pill and well, when I say pop pills, please, I'm talking of the right thing. So, <laughs> so, you know, for lunch, you have a little tablet and for supper, you have a tablet. That's not what life is. You, someone, somewhere, somehow is going to have to cook. So you need to help each other sort that matter out. It's, this person here, just because they can cook well, doesn't give you the license to invite who you want for tea and for supper and for the same. My daughter, you know, will cook. Even if you and her are on a good footing, on a good relationship, it will break it. She might be cursing you from inside to say, you know what, inconsiderate. Can't you see, I need my time. My... It's okay if it's once a month. You know, nowadays they say once a year. But anyway, no matter what, it's okay depending on how you are with these people. When your spouse has made a mistake, remember step number one is not to want out. No ways. That's the last step. Step number one is to seek medication, to solve the matter. The man made a mistake or the woman made a mistake, try and solve the problem, help them. They may come out of that mistake better than they ever were. You may have a more blissful marriage when you help them through the problem. That's one of your duties as a spouse. Remember this. With us, one problem, hey, I saw a message, it just says, I love you. Who the hell is this guy? Like? I want out, I'm going. I don't want to talk to you, out. Next, the man says, kalak, kalak, kalak. You know how it's like a lawn mower. Allah, Allah, Allah. <laughs> People think they're mowing the lawn. That's not how you divorce a woman. That's actually worse than an animal's way of speaking. And then you find out, oh, that was just a message from her mother or her father. And then you hit your head. Too late. Astaghfirullah. May Allah forgive us.